I just want to do one, one more little analogy okay. about how influencers came about. And I'm kind of appealing to the people who are my age, because when we were younger, uh, these infomercials would come on and then there'd be this dude in a lab coat talking about yeah. like, I'm an expert in this field and you need to do this. And that expert, that was an actor with a lab coat on, right? That expert is what the influencer became, uh, what, what became the influencer, I should say. So now we go online and there are these people who, you know, I've been in crypto for this long. I, I understand crypto. I'm going to use these crypto words. Uh, so I am now the expert. And it, the weirder part, that's the part that's weird now about it is not so much that there's this expert influencer person. It's that it's pushed at you. And that that's different. Um, we could like, we are, uh, in, we interact with social media in a way that TV and radio didn't do before. And so now there are there people who an feel normal. Period where yeah. the, you see the thought star, TV star started to do what the influencers are doing today, right? Yeah. Like before there was the authority in the, and they were looking at the quality of the thing, but then it started to migrate to uh, people you were looking into. And now it it's the people are can be anybody, like anybody yeah. can be influencer now. It's not mm. just like influencers become uh stars now. It's not yeah. stars that are that are influencers, like you know, it and, kind of and I think a lot of we people, were just talking about followers, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's, right, that's right, how right, they get right. there. Yeah. Yep. Um and I think a lot of people also caught on that um what there's before social media and during social media, uh, the beginning of it, there was this another overlap that you're talking about where news and advertising were the same thing. Or like, And that, uh. so once that happened, now you know that advertising and news is the same thing. It kind of opened the door for anybody to be, you know, news, <laughs> right? And they're, right. they're reporting right. their version of news. And their version of news is in this field. It's technology news. It's crypto news. It's uh, Beanie Baby news, whatever. I don't know. And so now that's now influencers grow. And influencers' job is to get followers. And they right. they absolutely can charge based on their how many followers there are, how many eyeballs. When I press post, here's how many eyeballs see it. And that's, yeah. I mean, that's there's value there. Definitely if you want to communicate what you're doing to, to eyeballs. It's gold. But I, exactly. I also right. want to say that there's a case where inf we would call them influencers because of, let's say, their follower count. Mm -hmm. But some influencers um, will get a return based upon services they offer, not just selling, you know, invest in X. And, and look, if we mm -hmm. look at some channels, even on YouTube, there's that guy who used to live in New York, who now lives in Texas, who does the Mac repairs, right? Mm -hmm. um, kind of an abrasive guy, but he's really good at what he does. And he repairs things and he goes to um, government and he tries to fight against the closed Apple system to where they yeah. can get parts and fix it. But the he's right got, to repair. Yeah. Yeah. Right to repair. So he fights for that. So there are people who are influencers. You could state that because of their following. But he's not um, he's not outright. What would I say? Shilling. That's right. probably what I would say. I think there's a difference between influencers who shill and pretended news and then share information based on discovery which is news and of course then providing a service which is built up because of course you are so open and share everything and do all sorts of things to create an environment where customers or clients eventually know you there's different kinds of influencers right so I don't know. And you, and you also the same influencer, I, like I just a couple triathlon influencers that I look at and they, they'll be clear. Like I got, I got to tell you guys, I really like this product. They're not, I bought this myself. They didn't send it to me. They're not paying me. They'll tell you that part. And then they don't tell you, they sent me this. I'm being paid to say this. You know, <laughs> they don't tell you that. They that's don't a different kind. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm saying. It's <laughs> you know? a different kind of influencer. Yeah. Now, even right. if you're paid to, to review it, some influencers, Look, I, I like YouTube. I watch a lot of videos. There are some people who talk about single board computers. Neeks, Neeks knows I go crazy over those things. Um, and then some of them will state, hey, so-and-so sent me this. 
they they gave it to me essentially. I'm still going to review it against all the other things the same way, but they gave it to me. We still have to trust the fact that we think they're going to be unbiased. Yeah. Um. And you know, based upon our experience with them, we can kind of vet that. But you're right. I think that yeah. some situations are. Hey, I'm reviewing this today, and you don't realize that they paid that person yeah. fifteen hundred bucks to review right. it. Oh, but even they built get, some, yeah, and, fifteen thousand. You know. yeah. yeah, and I think it's not really. I think it's kind of a secondary topic. Like obviously, we can talk about the bias of those reviewers, yeah. but I think what we really want to talk about is really the platform that they yeah. offer because that's what right. you really pay for right we need it right. you we, pay we... for the eyeballs exactly like rob mm. was mentioning yeah.